So today we're going to make a gliding mechanic and I've created a voxel 3D model of a plane and parented it to an empty object that holds a rigid body. And now we're going to create a script. We're going to call it gliding system. Open up Visual Studio. So let's delete everything. Let's see. Create a start method. Then create a, an update method. Okay. And we should have a camera controller to start with. And yeah, make sure that your rigid body has drag of one or whatever, it really depends. And now we're gonna create float value and call this base speed. Now we're gonna create another float value and call this current thrust speed. Max thrust speed and then a minimum thrust speed. The reason we're gonna have a minimum thrust speed is because we're gonna make it so that if it doesn't reach a certain speed, then it will just not let you glide. Anyways, moving on. We're gonna create another method called us private void fixed updates for the physics movement. We're gonna add force. Okay, so now let's see. We're gonna create another method called us gliding movement. And let's see. Well, first we're gonna probably manage rotation of the plane so I'll manage rotation make sure you have your camera controller set up and take this camera anchor so we're going to take the camera and go to the parent take the camera anchor because it actually goes towards the exact position of the player so I create another variable oh yeah make sure this is not serialized it's over here okay and you can create a transform variable private camera transform now we're gonna set this to camera dot main dot transform and then dot parent and so put manage rotation in update and we're gonna take the transform of the plane rotate it take its rotation do quaternion dot euler and let's make it so that it's a local and call this target rotation. Now we're gonna take the camera transform. Now take the other angles of it, take X, camera transform, we copy the X axis and the Y axis. And just keep it the same over here. Just leave this alone, use that axis. And now it should copy the rotation as long as I apply the script to the object. And let's see here. Okay, yeah, it copies the rotation. Now we're gonna have to actually add some form of thrust to it. So let's see, first we're gonna add a force. So make sure you reference your rigid body. Private rigid body RB, not ED, RB. Then you want to reference it. So get component, then rigid body. Then add a forward force. Vector 3.forward times the base speed. And right now it's gonna look probably probably gonna look weird. It'll feel unnatural right now. For the base speed, I probably would put it to 30, maybe put this to 400. Put minimum thrust speed. This minimum speed required to actually glide uh maybe three let's see have this base speed here and it's going opposite direction might have forgotten to add a relative force and also i think i need to make this backwards because of how i rotated my model so just make sure it's going in the right direction and apply relative force to this and so yeah looks kind of boring right now but we're gonna make it better so now we're gonna add a float variable Let's see, we're gonna map the pitch into a sine wave, which means if we go over here, okay, so if we map this pitch into a sine wave, this is the pitch. So map this pitch into a sine wave, and if I face up, it'll fall down. And if I face down, and you're gonna gradually build up speed so you can get some lift. And so we're just gonna map this into a sine wave. Take the mapped pitch in radians though, and take the transform of the object and take its Euler angle in the Z axis. And then we're gonna multiply this by a constant degrees to radians. 
Not mapped in radiance. Call us pitched in radiance. My bad. Pitched in radiance. Call us mapped pitch instead. And then we're gonna map this into a sine wave. So mathf.sine pitch and radians but now we're gonna have to probably multiply this by a factor so go over here create a serialized field private float and call this thrust factor because the sine function only outputs between negative one and one we'll multiply this by the thrust factor so we're gonna add the mapped pitch to the current thrust speed and it can be between negative the sine function be between negative one to one and we're multiplying this by the thrust factor and so if we face up it should gradually slow down and you'll fall and yeah so add it by that times time that delta time and so have this current thrust speed and let's see here you should probably replace base speed with current thrust speed probably put this inside a local all this uh gliding force maybe we should put this above make this look better And so we try to test it now. Well, I, I put the thrust factor at zero, so it's not going to do anything. Um, make sure th we could say thrust factor to 80, maybe. Make sure you have, say, ma uh, drag to maybe one or so. And it's going backwards. Forgot that I have to clamp the thrust speed between zero to the max thrust speed. Otherwise, it's going to go backwards between current thrust speed zero to uh max thrust speed make sure this is negative sign okay yeah make sure that's negative sign and yeah that that works fairly well But yeah, this looks pretty good already. And so next we're gonna make it so that, let's see, you're only gonna add force if your speed is greater than or equal to the minimum thrust speed. And if it is not, if it does not meet those conditions or meet that condition, it will force the current thrust speed to zero and it should work normally. And if it just if it goes straight down, so it, yeah, it won't just jump around it again. Anyways, now the next step would be adding tilt to the plane. And so what I would do is take the uh, mouse input. So let's see, uh, create a float, local float, call this x mouse or mouse x and take, let's see, input dot get axis not axis raw but axis because it'll smoothly interpolate between negative one to one and let's see mouse x the x uh, axis and you're probably well it's, yeah you'll try to blurb to the target rotation so turning dot blurb transform dot rotation to target rotation and let's see maybe call this float rotation speed make this uh serialized so you have rotation speed times time that delta time and let's see here I create an if statement and let's say if mouse x is equal to zero if your mouse is still that means you let's see take you should probably create a variable call this Let's call this um, tilt value and another value call this alert value and so we're gonna have um, a tilt value that is added by mouse x then times time dot delta time make sure this z axis is set to tilt value and then once you do that you should have let's see with that okay now try mathf dot alert so Tilt value is equal to mathf.lerp. We're gonna have between zero and could be 90 maybe. Actually, no, 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 no. I want to instead do mathf.lerp from, let's see, tilt value to mouse x by the lerp value. And make sure you have another value, all those private float tilt strength. 
gonna have tilt strength multiplied by this. Uh, so x times tilt strength. And let's see here. I'm gonna set alert value to one. No, no, not one. Um, times that double time. Then you're gonna try multiply it by try rotation speed. Else alert value is okay so actually make this tilt value inside of this if statement and then you want to set the alert value to zero when it's moving so wait no this should be uh this should be uh zero instead actually my bad and instead you want to maybe increment my mouse x times tilt strength times time delta time and that should give you the results yeah yeah okay so if it's not moving you do this and if it is moving you reset this alert value so yeah so it should be tilting to a certain point and then when you stop trying to tilt then it should return to its normal state i forgot to set the rotation speed i to set the tilt strength didn't i with this serialized field set this tilt strength to 90 what am i doing just increment by time to double time. Don't multiply this by rotation speed. Okay, so I probably should increase the tilt strength a little more. Try a thousand, I don't know. Yep, uh, whoa, that's a lot of tilt strength. Try reduce this to 500. Okay, we got this. Anyways, looks fine. Now, next step would be to probably change the drag depending on the angle of the plane. So to do that, we have to create, let's see, float nat pitch offset is equal to math, oh, how convenient. Math f dot cosine pitch in radians. And that enough, well, we'd have like all this, um, factor so you multiply by this it's mapped pitch offset or actually call this offset mapped pitch and now let's see you would set the drag to uh let's see set rb where is it rb dot drag is equal to offset mapped pitch and let's see here so basically what this will do is we should probably make this um an absolute value now that i think about it f of that abs or i could just put it over here and let's see i should have probably checked the drag first the drag factor is zero so i should probably set it to one and it's probably debug.log the drag value rb.drag and let's see here so if i look up less drag look down less drag but if i look forward i get yeah more drag and we could probably set a minimum and maximum so let's see here we could try to clamp it so instead of math of data abs, try clamping this to clamp map to pitch, offset map to pitch to 0.2f to uh, drag factor. And so again, try to see the minimum drag at 0 I could have picked better terrain for this, but yeah, whatever. Anyways, the thing I could add. So I'm gonna add an acceleration percentage. So private float. Call this acceleration percentage or acceleration percent. 
you're gonna have let's see acceleration percent is equal to okay so if uh transform dot uh euler angles uh, x is greater than 300 greater or equal to 300 degrees um then um set acceleration percent to two or well, not two um 0.2 f maybe create another variable i have two variables all those low percentage or low percent and high percent percent so low percent and then high percent so maybe set low percent to 0.1 f and one maybe who knows and then you're gonna multiply this acceleration percentage by the let's see yeah multiply this by the math to pitch when it is being added to the current thrust speed maybe i can make this local instead let's make this local and there we go that looks about right and let's just test this out let's see here Oh yeah, I forgot. We need to also take the acceleration percentage. We want to take the angle at the x-axis and modulo 360. And so maybe we could introduce another local, call this pitch in degrees. And relocate this at the top maybe. And so if we try to test it, Thank you. 